I need to, I need to borrow a table. You know, I gotta come
Shirley? What's wrong?
sibling. Does that mean you're in the van? Huh? Does that mean you're in the van? Not hard. <laughs> but I need some new lines out there. Well, I'll have to go buy it. I mean, you can't have them. <laughs> well, what are you up to now? Yeah. 
The tape is up. Just like a different kind of VCR player. No, what you mean? It's a VHS tape. Yeah, but you gotta record it on the little tape. You take 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 the Oh, it's just like a, a big blank tape. Yeah. You stick it inside that and stick that in your BCR. Yeah. We'll run out of battery for this. Guaranteed to shoot under par with that shirt. <laughs> May not be able to hit the ball well, but I'll be dressed for it.
Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, Deb went 43 42. 43 42. Yeah. Should have been there today. I got three birdies on the back. <laughs> Uh, when are we going to do Dad's presents? 
I don't know. Whenever they want to. Ask uh, Courtney wants to do this. When you going to open your parents? <laughs> she wants to help. That's fine. They're on that back table. Well, I'll go around see if everybody's too neat. Okay. has to be around every present that's open. Craig said you just... Hey, you're getting married. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Hey, Dad? Dad? What? Craig said, don't have to sit there and spin the hammer. Because yeah. you're not going to need any line, you don't catch anything. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. 
What's the say, Ken? Charlie, I'm, I, I'm sorry you even read that. <laughs> I gotta see that. <laughs>
You have to watch her, she's just like a snail. She just draws you right around. What do you mean? <laughs> Look at that smile.
probably nothing in it. Just a flash of light. Gotta be extra. Any epistle there? That's why they're playing now. Yeah, he beats up big girls. Big girls. Stop, stop. Play one play now? Okay. Okay. Can we just get one? Can we just get one? Don't go like that. I'm waiting. That pops them up. Like, see these buttons go. Go, go. No! I'm not sure about that. Get them, get them. Get them, get them. I can go. Right now, she's busy. We're on paper. I can go. She made a move out at the end of the month. Yeah. And most of them were best ball players. Who are you? And you're what now? Six foot. And you weigh how much? 140. 140 pounds. Six feet tall. Tell Dad to behave yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell Dad to behave yourself. You can give Walt some instructions now, Dad. Just <laughs> you stand up there in that frozen north long enough. <laughs> Come down here where I, you can show me how to play golf again because I believe I've totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot in the 80s, I shoot in the 100s. <laughs> hey, second time I ever played golf, I shot a 118. You did? Yes, sir, I did. Well, watch. Look at that. Huh? I, I had a high score well, in uh, May of 111. Hide there. Hide there. Mom, watch. Hide there. Can he tell her what? I know. Well, watch. Gosh, it kind of chokes me up. Come here. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like him, do you? Huh? But he just knows, doesn't he? Look at that. He's sleepy. And I usually rock him to sleep. Are you sleepy, sweetie? Uh uh. Rock by your baby with a dixie melody. When you cruise, you're a tune on the heart of Dixie. He said, What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Well, you turn around, I'll do it. Here. Roll it more, roll it more, roll it more. Throw it in the pan. Here you go. Patty cake, patty cake, baked through the pan. Roll it more, roll it more, throw it in the pan. <laughs> Good again, Grandpa. Roll him over, roll him over, roll him over, roll him over, throw him in the face. <laughs> Take it off and it off. Roll him over, 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 throw him in the face. <laughs> Good you're never, never going to get it. Roll him over, roll him over, roll him over, throw him in the face. <laughs> you're a You wear me out. Brenda's great with them. What's that? It's not Barney, that's um just children's song. Yeah, children. Which one? Nothing, ma'am. Nothing, ma'am. Can you sing it? Is that? Yeah, it is. Already. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous, though. No kidding. First time I've ever seen these kids. I know. You see how we I made you hold him when he was a baby. She's ashamed of herself to keep these kids away from you <laughs> Well, you know, we brought yeah, Christian down when he was a baby and we had to make you hold him because you don't hold babies, you know. And I still have pictures of it. So, better hold him now. They're not babies anymore, so. <laughs> hold him while you got them. It'll be Dad that'll come down next. You can probably almost guarantee it.
did, how long ago was it that we wrote, that you guys roasted Tony? What? How long ago was it that Tony got roasted and Dad came down? Is that long? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just... Yeah. I took my shoes off there on the school ground at Glenelg High School. And I jumped the flat on my height then was six feet. Uh -huh. And that's what I jumped over that bar. You're kidding. And landed on my feet on the other side. And come to find out years later that I was within three inches of the world record. I didn't even know. Oh, my word. I could have jumped higher, I guess, but I said, I'm, I'm going to jump my height. Well, it took me four tries, and I jumped. Did they have the Olympics back then, Dad? No. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah, they did. Back when there was Ricky Roman days. <laughs> well, I wasn't well, Ricky Roman, so I didn't go on about it. Yeah. I didn't go on about it. I didn't think anything about it. I just said, well, they got the bar. I'm going to jump the height. I figured anybody should jump the height. Yeah. Sure, right. Piece sure. of cake. Well, yeah, no problem. Five seven. So when you found out your record, did you try it again? Oh, that was years later. Oh, oh. Yeah, a long time after that. No, I don't. Yeah, when you had your horse Royal, I mean, talk about Royal before, did, that was just a working horse, or I mean, that's my cow horse. I know, I know. <laughs> could you, could that you, was my buddy. Could, could he jump? I mean, like over fences and stuff. I wonder what you are. Up, up, up. It used to have a good guitar out of, out of Jim and Henry. Who? Bill Dance had Mel Tittis as his guest. Mel says, uh, Bill, I'll tell you something. When I was a young man, my mother would go into fish chicken and dumpling. He said she started to fish and realized she didn't have any chicken. She told me to go down to the neighbor to raising chickens and get a couple of fat chickens. Right. Go with the dumpling. Right. He said, I went to the barn and got a truck sack and went down there and she picked out two chickens. Put them in the sack. Started back home. I met a fellow named JJ. And JJ says, Mel, what have you got in that sack? Because I got chicken. The mother wants me to put in some dumplings. JJ says, If I tell you how many chickens you have in that sack, will you give me one of them? Mel says, If you can tell me how many chickens I have in this sack, I'll give you both of them. <laughs> JJ says, Six. <laughs> oh, I'll give you both oh. of them. <laughs> oh, my word. Ginger! Ginger says, see. Ta-da! Ta-da! I see one coming up. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in there. Let it go. Daddy told me one day when we moved to Lake Butler. He said, boy, I want to tell you now, if you, if you go quail hunting with your uncle Doug, you don't want to ever get ahead of him. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll, I'll try to remember that. And the first time we went quail hunting, right in, across the road in front of the house, I had a bird dog named Lady, <clears throat> and I stopped to pick up on a dirt road, and she jumped out the back of the truck and just froze. I looked down and it wasn't anything but a big clump of wire grass, just one big single clump of wire grass. What kind of grass? Wire grass. Wire grass? Yeah. Okay. And I said, lady, what's the matter with you? And I just walked up and kicked a clump of wire grass, and a whole cup of your quail came out and muttered. <laughs> I, I called her to him and apologized. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't have any idea of being a quail in that one little clump of grass. There was 15, 18 birds under it. Oh, my word. So I got my gun, it was still in the truck. Right. And my hunting coat. And I hung it up with me and we went out there where the birds went down and the lady pointed. I, I was right handed, my uncle Dub shot left handed. I said, Uncle Dub, let me get on the left side and I'll shoot the bird and go left. You're left handed, you shoot the bird and go right. That'd be a natural shot for you. Right. He said, All right. Well, 
first couple went left and I got them. That was a, that was a mistake. Because from then on, it didn't make any difference which direction they went. Just as soon as the lady pointed and the bird got up, the brrrr, bam, Uncle Dub would shoot and blow it all to pieces. Oh. And then I realized what my daddy meant by don't get ahead of him with your quail hunt. Because he wouldn't give a bird a chance to more than clear his bushes before he'd blow him all to pieces. So I just kept my gun on my shoulder and said, Uncle Dub, I'm going to wait till you catch up and then we'll go ahead and find another covey of birds so I'll let him shoot the rest of the single in that covey. Uh -huh. And that was the lesson I had to learn. Don't ever get a ahead of him shooting birds because he'll pull them all to pieces. Did you just use Did bird you ever shot? Like buckshot or something? No, it's bird shot. But it's so close? Huh? It's so close it would just blow them up? Well, yeah, the, the shot wouldn't get a chance to hard expand, you know. Right. Out into a pattern, they did hit that bird and they'd be in a cluster like so about three times the size of the bird and just blow them all to pieces all you find be two or three little pieces of feather you know <laughs> maybe a piece of skin what's the difference between bird shot and buckshot bird shot small if there'll be eights or nines or tens buckshot is off double off ones you know the lower the number the bigger the shot oh this thing really pulverized i tell you then I knew what that meant by never get ahead of it with your bird hunt. You're going to blow them all to pieces before we let you get any more of them. One time. Did you ever take dad hunting? Know any stories about my dad? Can you tell I, any I stories about my dad? Bird dog. I didn't have any bird dogs or deer dogs or nothing then. <laughs> all the good dogs I had. So did dad get in any trouble when he was little? Uh, Dear kid. Never did anything? <laughs> yeah, all right. You hear that, dad? You're putting that down. Henry was down at the shop in with me. I had a load to go to Janesville, off the market. I got him parted out and put him on the truck. I said, Henry? It'd save a little time if you lead Royal back to the barn on Saturday for me. He said, lead her? I'm not going to lead her anywhere. I'll ride her. <laughs> I said, you better lead her, because I'm the only one that's ever been on her. I don't care. You are the only one that's ever been on her. I'm going to ride her. And I, before I could leave with a truck, Henry got her out the, outside the gate, put the reins over her head, and put his foot in the stirrup started up and the first part of him that hit was his rear end hit the dirt because she was gone. <laughs> she jumped completely out from under him. Of course, as soon as the rain hit the ground, she stopped. And she said, oh, I ought to kill you. I, I said, don't you hit my horse. I told you you ought to, you ought to lead her to the barn. I'm not kidding. I said, if you ought to ride her now, put her head around toward the skirt so you'll get a chance to get in the saddle before she jumps out and lunges. Uh. He said, I don't see you pulling her head around. I said, I'm the only one that's ever been on her. She did not want you on her. So you will have to pull her head around or she'll jump out and lunges every time you start to get on her. And she might buck after you hit the saddle too. I don't know. She did. I, I'm glad because she was throwing him if she had. Hello, Royal. I said, uh, yeah. I'm going to drive a truck on back over to the house, which was, I had to go back and loop around to get to the house, you know, rather than go across the railroad track and down two, two ditches and open three or four gates to get to the house. If, if you were going to ride Royal on over the house, I promise yum, you yum. I'd have to get some cattle. They said yes. So I left in the truck, went over the house, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. 30, 45 minutes later, no it, no in it, no royal. I've got the pickup and went back around, looked around the pecan grove, and in it was standing at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and royal was standing 15, 20 feet behind him back there with the reins down on the ground. I said, ain't it? Huh? Why didn't you bring the horse on over? Why didn't you bring royal on over to the house? He said, Mr. Kenny, I got on that horse. And she threw me so high, the first part of me to hit the ground was my back. 
Ah. I said, she, she bucked with you? He said, yes, sir. He said, yeah, I'm not getting back on that old crazy horse. <laughs> I said, Enoch. I walked over to Royal and threw one rein up on her neck, picked up the other, stepped up in the saddle. And said, Let's go, gal. She walked off just as pretty. And he took his hat off and scratched his head. He said, Kenny, how'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But she did not want anybody but me on her. Yeah. She was that way. One man horse. Yeah. And I could call her and she'd come to me just as far as she could hear my voice. If Jim or Henry could call her, she wouldn't even pick her head up. She'd keep right on eating grass. Kind of like me. Like <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Look at that, Dad. <laughs> hey, watch. You got the touch. <laughs> <laughs> or she'd say, you know, shit, she never could figure out who she was. Uh, Have you ever seen the Bill Cosby comedy thingy where his parents are talking about calling their kids names and stuff? Well, Brenda, David. <laughs> she never figured out who David was. <laughs> Better you're your daddy all over. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> He's crazy too. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> oh man. I'll take it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the first time I'll ask you what was down here. I like to have gotten the boys talking to Granddaddy on the phone. No! <laughs> Christian, did you hear what he said? He looks just like you. <laughs> he didn't hear that? He turned the phone away on him. He said, he looks just like you. Like turned the leg over the dog and he didn't. Okay? Go to that grew up almost before you realized it. Makes me look back on things, I'm, oh well, no point in dwelling on that. <laughs> Anyhow, look back and see some mistakes I made that I wish I could back up and correct, but that's impossible. I'm going to pass my tree. Well, I just thought I'd make you day and then come to find out you've been told to go just about everything, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Tell him we're getting him on film, whether he likes it or not. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It has 40 acres. It sits straight across the road in front of his house. Why me? When I trade. When they need two points. You want that should be traded off? That deep in the prairie. And then when you cross this little drain ditch out on the open prairie itself where you have prairie grass, a pine tree won't grow out there. So that uh, Mike Brown that was field representative before, he told me they tried to set pine seeders out on that coming prairie part, or the prairie part of coming prairie. I said, you did what? He said, yeah, they told us to set pine seedlings on it. It hurt him. I said, well, you just wasted your Christian? money, wasted your pine seedlings, because they will not grow on that prairie. He said, yeah, we found that out. I said, well, I could have told you, saved you a piece of money and time. He said, we tried to, we stood them out in White Strand and tried to raise them. I said, another boo-boo. They won't grow in White Strand either. That's the Mac Knight Why don't you offer your services as a consultant to GP from the land? Instead of paid for consultation. They've already 
found all those mean boo boos they can make and cost them a lot. <laughs> Took them years and years to find out, well, but they right. found them. He's than a consultant, right? Well, I thought anybody would. Y'all gonna get, get hurt in there now if you fall on that hard floor. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I need to transfer. Mike, I need to transfer. Yeah, you trip. All they had to do as far as the Pulver Ferrari part was concerned <laughs> was stand there at that drain ditch and look out on the Ferrari. In the pine tree inside. Nothing but a few palm trees. Take it easy, guys. You have a few pine trees, the, the creek is over here, and you have a few pine trees scattered along this creek swamp. It isn't it, it really a swamp, it's just low-lying ground, but it, it's entirely different soil. The trees aren't heavy, just thin and scattered. But on that old prairie, nothing but grass. That, that should have warned it. The same thing is true of White Strand. Well, where is White Strand? In the in the night Oh, okay. Mike Brown told me they tried to they set pine seedlings in the White Strand. Uh-uh, get your feet off of them. I said, well, threw away some more money, didn't you? He said, yeah, they won't grow there either. He said, well, I want them. I said, wrong type. Raising timber, right? What you would do. I would think so because if, if you figure 10 acres for the cow, great. Right, now, GP is paying a little over $13 an acre a year timber lease. Now, if you take 10 acres per cow, that's $130. Okay, do that to me. Hello. Hello, boy. That's $130. That calf has to bring clear to no. correspond with what you'd get out of a timber lease per year. That, that's $13 an acre, and that's what they're paying right now. They wasn't paying that to start with. But since Daddy tied part of it to the producer index, right. that's what did. Like Otherwise, if he hadn't done that, it would still be at 375 an acre. But it went from that to over 13. Well, the, the, uh, the February payment is always the same. That's the basic price. For that 375 corn or 375 an acre, whichever is more. Then the other half of them is tied to the producer index. Now they want, GP wants to take it all off of September and put it all on the producer index. And I'll say no. Because they have a reason for that. They aren't, they didn't ask for that just out of the business of real heart to help the Townsend family. Any fool knows that. Get the benefit of Georgia Pacific. And I think Dad is smart enough businessman to know that it pays to have half your eggs over here and half your eggs over here right. instead of all your eggs right here. Right. You know, it just makes it, it's common sense. That letter that, that John sent out there, a buddy that uh, stated that, that that's what they want to do, he said uh, he, he thought it would be a very good idea. Now, now make, making remarks like that when he doesn't really know what he's talking about is the wrong thing to do. When you talk to him, you able to clarify that? I, I didn't take time to to go into that because it was my phone bill. So, tell him what to talk 45, 45 minutes to him, trying to explain this, the, the, the uh, cord is lift at the end of the timber lease. That's, that's just too much. It, it would have taken another hour. I'd have, I'd have had a phone bill there that the elephant couldn't swallow. So I just let it go at that. Uh, I'm hopeful one day to Maybe be able to meet him up there in Baker County sometime when he's going up there. Or if he's going to Palatka, stop by Baker County, and I'll try to arrange to meet, meet him up there. Even if I have to ask Craig to drive me up in his car. Does he come up very often? No, he doesn't. All his cars find him by, by mail. By mail. <clears throat> I don't think he's been up there for once. I know he, he, he did tell me he talked to Bill about this. Uh, impending termination of the lease, 26 years, it's coming January. It's a long time off. Well, you have to look ahead now. They aren't going to jump jump right up at any suggestion you make now. And, uh,
do what you ask them to do as far as leaving the different size to 15-year-olds rather than the 5-year-olds. Because legally, they've covered their obligation to leave it 5-year-old pine seedlings. Yeah. Uh, maybe about high this ceiling here, maybe 10 feet high, that's 8 foot ceiling. Be 10, probably 10 feet high. Three and a half inch in diameter, about, about that big around. You can cut a damn one of them for at least five years, then they wouldn't be but 10 years old. And you'd be sacrificing over three cords per acre by cutting them in 10 years instead of waiting for another five years. And three cords an acre, you know. In the 15 years you cut half of them and thin it out, and then five years after that you thin it out again, right? You do that, or five years later cut the whole damn thing and just replant it. Because at the end of another five years, they'd be 20 years old. You, you have the fastest growth you're going to get out of them. From then on, all they do is just fill out bigger. But that's a lot slower than the growth of them. Follow me? <clears throat> so we could have a total harvest in a period of 20 years. Now they, uh, Mr. Brinson in Lake Butler, the head of National Container up there, told me that they had proved they could raise a quarter acre of wood per year. Well, it, it doesn't quite work out that way. It works out to be about 80% of a, of a quarter of wood per year. Eight, eight tenths of a cord, rather, you know, rather than eight tenths. Eight, eight tenths of a cord of wood rather than a full cord. Because basing the figures on the growth of the, of the timber from the time you set it out, see your five-year-old line, you do grow an average of five and a half cords in five years. So a cord per acre is true there, but in 10 years, a ten-year-old set of uh, ten-year-old bunch of pine timber, you just have eight and a quarter cords per acre. So that drops it down to about eight, just over eight tenths of a cord per acre per year. And your fifteen-year-old is eleven cords per acre. That drops it down to about three fourths of a cord. Huh? Yeah, time out. Mm -hmm. time out. Okay, time out. Payment per acre per year would be time for area and perhaps a side camp. You might not side camp. That's talking about grazing on both sides of that canal. It's as boggy as a devil now getting across that canal from the roadside back in there to the back side. Where that old road used to be back there. The prairie is a section, but you can't leave cattle on the prairie when you have a lot of rain because they get what they call board shoulder. The front shoulder gets stiff, but they can hardly walk there. They call it a board shoulder because they can't bend that shoulder. So Who can't? The cattle. Oh. The cattle get this what they call board shoulder. From that prairie being so doggone wet because there's no high ground for them to get on. Oh, okay. So you got to have some place to move them to. So there goes the cattle in the prairie. We always had the McQueen pasture to move them to when they got the board show. And we put another bunch of cattle on the prairie. You know, I don't have it now. Well, I don't know. I guess about the smartest thing to do, getting away from sentimental side of it, is throw sentiments away that you have toward Tumnan Prairie and see if you can arrange a swap with C.H. Coward. That section of that's Tumnan Prairie, a section across the road from the Queen Pass, starting at the Volusia Flagler County line, running a mile down each side. That's this section. 648. Well, it'd be corresponding to the number of acres in the prairie. It's 650 or 680, whatever. 
All I'm saying is the distance down each, shot, each side should be the same. Mm -hmm. And if it takes in all open land, fine. If it takes in open land and part of a strand, fine. But I know that it's going to take in part of that strand that C.H. Coward doesn't like, but that water pouring across there off the McQueen Pass. Well, we can live with that. He has to live with water in the prairie. What do you think of that? Strong, he has a piece sitting on one side of the prairie, and he has another piece sitting on the opposite side further down where the open prairie itself is. And if we could swap the prairie for equal acreage up across the road from the McQueen pasture, Next to Thick, Thick Bend Creek, mm -hmm. that would be a, a nice thing to do it. He has very little, if any, timber on his, so we could cut the timber off the prairie and just swap land if Robert Strong would like to do that. But wasn't he already approached? I think Mike Brown approached him. I don't know if he ever heard from him or not. Well, I thought you told me he wasn't interested, um, but, or maybe you talked to somebody and said that I call Mike he would Brown always back. offer him but I don't remember what Mike uh, had to say about it, what Mr. Strong had to say about it. He may have said that Robert Strong wasn't interested in swapping land, right? Not anymore, not at this point in time. Well, that, 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 that may be the end of that. That would be the better of the two deals. Well, it doesn't really matter one's as good as the other. It's a more beneficial to Robert Strong. That's as high as it'll go. As high as it'll go. Down. Uh, down. Down. Hey, um, up. Up. Down. Hey, um, up. Will you exercise, Dad? Uh, down. 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 Timber lease on his land. 
The same thing is true of the piece of Corona they work, work on Junior Strickland on that. Because Junior wants that piece of land so they can back in the Strickland camp. The piece on Dead Lake, they want to build a nice place down there for the top executive. Exactly what they want. I don't see how you figure out what they want. Not pasture. Blacks, maybe. Anywhere from eight to a quarter of a mile of being out to Perkins Highway. No. And the bombing target that we have is just out in the middle of Raymond Tucker's pasture on the other side of it. We had a piece worked out where we were going to swap. The bombing target for the piece that Raymond had was on our own out the, the highway. With the blessings of either Georgia or Georgia Pacific, whichever one it was. And right at the last minute, the word got to the family that uh, whichever one was going to swap was going to also give Raymond $12,000 in that deal. Same angry though, I'm pretty sure. Out of the way. Family said, no, no, no way. Deal not get in. Micah. We aren't trading. Micah. Well, that's really the 6 dollars So what do you think, Grandpa? You think he looks pretty good for almost 70? What? I said, do you think you look pretty good for almost 70? I think they look working. I think so they look cat wouldn't drag you. <laughs> oh, baloney. Got to be a cat, Dad. Any kind of cat. Hey, we're going to cat me. Oh, I'm going to play. Is the play button working? What were you dreaming of?